How are you guys doing? This is uh, Mike Johnson here, again, coming from the Pharmacy over at Health and, Health, Clinic, Health and Hope Clinic. And um, in this lecture video, we're going to discuss how to dose insulin medications for patient assistance or, or uh, prescription assistance programs. Insulins will be drastically different than what we just covered in, in quantifying the oral medications. So before we go and do a couple practice prescriptions, I want us just to go ahead and brainstorm. Uh, well, actually, I'll do most of the brainstorming, but I want to go ahead and tell you some things that come to my head every time that I, I work through these I work through these insulin PAPs. Um, some of the more common insulins, some of the most common insulins that we're going to use um, will be split up into long-acting, short-acting, and mixes. So let's talk about long-acting and these are known as basal, let me spell that right, basal, I think that's right, long acting, um, short acting, and then there is <clears throat> these mixes, these mixes that have usually intermediate acting and short acting insulins combined. So when we talk about long acting, there's going to be two specifically that scream to my, scream to my head that we use most frequently, and that's going to be Levomir, Levomir, and Lantus. Levomir and Lantus. The most common short acting that we use is definitely Humalog. It's definitely Humalog. Very, very common um, short acting insulin that we use. Some, um, there will be convolutions thereof. Um, I've seen Humulin, Humulin used. And I've also seen oops, Novolog. These are some of our more common short-acting insulins that we use um, here at Health and Hope Clinic for our patients. Uh, we have a, we have a lot of them, and um, and it makes it uh, pretty nice to work with because we do have a little bit of an extra quantity now. We've gone ahead and and um, grab some up, and then with our mixes, usually these are specific to Novolog, seventy thirty, and Humalog. 7525. So when you see these, be careful. Don't just say, oh, you know, that, that prescription has a has Humalog on it. Let's oh, I don't know what these numbers mean, but let's just give it to the patient anyways. That would be bad medicine. So be careful. Every time you see these numbers, 7525, 7030, this is a ratio of an intermediate acting to a short acting um, insulin. So just be careful about that. They are not the same. Humalog and Humalog 7525 are not the same. Novolog and Novolog 7030 are not the same. So just be careful about that. All these insulins dose for 90 days. So all insulins dose for 90 days. I know in the prior video we discussed, we had some insulins that dosed every 100, I'm sorry, we had some medications that dosed every 120 days, but insulins will be sent to us every 90 days on behalf of the patient. So just be cognizant about that. And then also, I'm going to highlight Levomir, and I'm going to highlight Novolog and Novolog 7030. The reason why I highlighted those is that these will only come in the form of vials. These will only come in the form of vials. Insulins, as you probably saw in my lecture 13, which is the vials versus the um, versus the pens uh, lecture. This lecture, this is um, this is something specific. So. Each one of these come in two different forms. Levomir, Novolog, Novolog 7030, the mix, they all they all come in both vials and pens. However, the drug companies now are restricting them. They're saying, you know, if you're going to be on these drugs and you're getting them for free, we are no longer going to give you pens. Most of our patients like pens. They really, really do. Um, they're easy. You can keep them in your pocket. You know, uh, it's not it's not difficult. You don't have to have a separate you don't have to have a separate um, uh, needle and um, and separate uh, separate syringe to withdraw the protein from the vial itself. So these are these are great. Um, however, they only come in vials. These guys come in vials or pens. So these guys come in vials or pens. So all the ones that I, I guess I'll highlight, um, or I'll just do, I'll just circle in red. Lantus, Humilog, Humilog, uh, Humilin, Humilog 7525. They come in vials or pens. So I, I do I do forecast that probably in the months to come that most of these will eventually become vial only. Um, so that's the reason why I usually recommend to our providers. I say you know oh you know is there any play we could possibly write for Lantus over Levomir? Because we can still get Levomir as a pen. 
can we write for humalog or renovalog? Because we can still get these as pens. So, um, so that's often why I try to help our patients, especially with ease and compliance, by recommending some of the, the more feasible um, short actings and long actings and even the mixes that can come in pens because the, the patients like it, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, and these are very, very expensive. They're ungodly expensive. So, um, so this is just a quick summary that comes to my, my head when I think about the different types of insulins we use. Um, there are other types of insulins out there. There's, um, there's you know, Bieda. There's so many different types out there. But these are the most common ones that we use here at Health and Hope. Most of the insulins do have patient assistance programs that they are that are available to them. However, these ones we use very frequently. Um, sometimes we get a lot of extras, so it's just easy to keep this on, on in our fridge. And, and we often use these when it comes to uh, just starting off a patient. Many times our patients do not know they were diabetic. We have a lot of new onset cases. Um, we have a lot of new onset type 2s. We have some people that come in type 1 not realizing they're type 1. So, um, so we often start them on a regimen in order to reduce their blood sugar and we get an idea uh, of what kind of insulin insulin quantity they're going to be taking. So um, one other thing that, well actually two other things that come to my, my, my brain when, when I think about insulins is that I know all insulins, all insulins, well okay I shouldn't say all, the insulins that we use in our clinic, <laughs> the insulins that we use in our clinic will dose, will have a, a certain concentration. So the insulins that we use at Health and Hope will, um, and this is, this is everything except for Epidra. Epidra does a little bit differently, but for right now, this will be 100 units per every one ml. So the insulins will always have 100 units of insulin, 100 units of insulin per one ml. Um, and this is going to be different, as we talked about in the vial versus the pen video, that in our pens, there are three mls. And in our vials, there are 10 mLs. So each one of these has a different quantity of of insulin within the within the um, within the vec with the vesicle that, that that gives it. So the pens only have three mLs. The vials have 10 mLs. So you see that the vials contain a little bit more than three times the amount of the pens. They they um they are just a little bit more cumbersome because the vials you actually have to have a separate syringe and separate needle to to remove and evacuate the insulin and then inject it into into oneself so um, they're not as easy to 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 work with for some of our patients so let's think about this if the pens have three mls we know that we have 100 units per every one ml and we have three mls per pen we know that we would have 300 total units of insulin per pen. So one pen will have 300 units of insulin. If we look at the vials, we know that there's still going to be 100 units per 1 ml, but we have um, 10 mls per vial, so we will have 1,000 units per vial. 1,000 units per vial. So this is going to be the quantity, the concentration of units of insulin per pen, units of insulin per vial. So just keep that in mind as well as we progress through this lecture in regards to the insulin dosing. And then last, last, I remember in our EMR, which is med services, when we input prescriptions, when we input prescriptions, the insulins the insulin quantity is based off of mLs. Based off of mLs. So, even if you give the patient, so for every one pen that you give the patient, you're going to input a quantity of three. For every one vial, every one vial you give the patient, should be one vial. For every one vial you give the patient, you're going to give them a quantity of 10. So just be careful about. Uh, about how this works. And again, as you as you get a couple of these, get some practice, work with a pharmacist, work with a provider, work with a the nurse. They can all help together. It's definitely a team collaborative effort and it's a lot of complicated calculations, especially if it's the first time you've ever done it. 
So, um, so just take that into consideration as you go ahead and do these. So now since we've gone over some of the important facts um, in regards to insulin and dosing, um, let's go ahead and try a couple practice prescriptions. Um, so notice here, hopefully we can all see that. Um, notice here we have a test patient, test patient, the drug is Novolog 7030 pens. The SIG is to take 30 units SQBID quantity 30 pens for one year, and this is written by Dr. Cotty. Okay, so some things are flagging in my head. Notice Novolog 730, he wants pens. He understands that patients are more compliant when they have pens. They definitely are. It's easier to, to have and keep on you. Um, but as we go back to the first video, we know Novolog only comes in vials. So one thing is that I would I would ask uh, I would ask uh, Dr. Cotty is whether or not he wants to keep a prescription that only comes as vials. It's okay to engage conversation with the providers. It's actually encouraged. Uh, our providers are are really awesome because they they love to educate, they love to teach, they they really like helping people, and they like helping people more than just dosing and giving them medicine. They like to teach. Teaching is a form of helping. It's a form of learning. So um so this is something they like doing. So never feel never feel never feel you know trepidatious asking asking a provider you know a question or even offering um, even offering you know your your two cents you know it's a collaborative effort so in the first circumstance I was said you know um, you know dr. Cotty would you would you like prefer would you prefer writing for Humalog 7525 it's another one of those mixes that has a short acting and the intermediate acting um, but let's pretend that he says you know no um, we've tried him on Humalog 7525 he's not as he doesn't respond as well as blood sugar levels don't respond as well he's dead set on having no blog 7030 and that's okay but in this circumstance in this circumstance remember this only comes as vials so in our EMR as we will do this separately the name of the drug will just be Novolog, Novolog 7030. It will not be Novolog pens because if we try to apply for the pens, it will get denied. Novolog, um, Novo Nordisk, which is the company that sends, the manufacturing company that sends Novolog and they produce Novolog 7030 and Novolog, they will not send the pens, they will deny it. And then the patient won't have anything. So be very cognizant, this only comes in vials. So in order for me to determine, so the question that we need to ask ourselves is how many vials, it's a horrible handwriting, sorry, sorry about that, how many vials do we need for a three-month supply? This is the question that I ask myself then I, in order for me to properly determine the quantity that we need. So in order to do that, let's go ahead. We're going to do some math, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and understand the SIG. Let's look at the SIG. The SIG says take 30 units subcutaneously BID, which is twice daily. So we're going to inject. We want to be very specific to the patient. Inject 30 units SQ subcutaneously subcutaneously twice daily twice daily I mean the worst handwriting today twice daily so now we're gonna come down we're gonna do some math <laughs> So let's think about that. If they take 30 units twice daily, we know that they're going to have to use 60 units per day. 60 units per day. So now we recognize that we're dosing this for a three-month supply, which is known as 90 days. Three months supply, 90 days. Don't say, oh, what happens about 31? I know I know a lot of you people um, that are learning say, what happens if we have 31 days or 29 days? Uh, the average over the entire year, um, they will actually supplement accordingly. So we assume a pharmacy month is exactly 30 days. So we're going to say that a three-month supply will be 90 days. So we're going to have to multiply this times 90 days to see how many units they're going to use per order, per shipment. So we say, okay, you know, 9 times 6, 54, add two zeros. So we know that we're going to have to use 5,400 units for the entire three-month period, for every three months. So that's how much the patient needs. 
So, um, so hopefully, I just and I forgot to say this at the very beginning. Hopefully, you asked Dr. Cotty if we've had the patient on this that we don't expect the patient's dose to increase that much. Um, that this is a dose that the patient feel, the patient and the provider feel comfortable with with um, with in order for obtaining from the drug company. The reason being is that it creates a lot more of a, of a cumbersome effort if we have to go and cancel this application and then rewrite it because the patient needs 70 units of some continuously twice daily. Um, so hopefully this has been achieved and they've got them on a good regimen and this is a consistent amount of insulin they're going to be taking and it won't increase that much. So again, offer these ideas, talk it out with the providers, all of this is important to and important for the patient to uh, to make sure that we get for the patient the correct amount of insulin. So um, it's, it's very important. So always ask questions. Never feel bad asking questions. So we know that we're going to use this patient going to use 5,400 units per every three months. So let's think about this. We know that as a vial there will be 10 mLs. There's going to be 10 mLs, which equivocate to 1,000 units per vial. We realize that we're going to use 5,400 units per three-month period, and the vials come in 1,000 units. So if we want to calculate how many vials we need, I'm just going to pull up the daily calculator right here. Um, so normally here we will need to divide. So notice um, we will have 5,400 units per every three months, and we're going to divide that by 1,000 units per vial. Notice my units cancel. So I know that I will have 5400 divided by 1000 and we get 5.4 vials, the vials will shoot up here, per every three months. 5.4 vials per every three months. So we know that they can't ship 0.4 of a vial so we're always going to round up. So we will need six vials. I'll do it down here. Probably my face is in the way. We know that we will need um, six vials per every three months. Six vials for every three months. So now we have to recognize the quantity to enter into our EMR. If we know we need six vials for every three months, we know every vial has 10 mLs. So we know six vials and every vial has 10 mLs, we know that we're going to need a quantity of 60. So the quantity we would enter into our EMR for this prescription would be 60. So quantity would be 60. The um, prescription length or prescription, uh, the prescription days would be 90 and then refills we always know we will refill every three months so refills will be a value of three and we're going to go through and enter this in our EMR in another lecture but I just wanted to bring that to your attention that's how we calculate this dose so we're going to have to input a value of 60 for this prescription and again this is something we're going to see very frequently we do a lot of a lot of PAPS for um, for insulin so now let's go down to our next video I'm sorry our next prescription so notice this is Lantus so our drug that we are going to be working with is Lantus. So notice, um, notice the provider, Dr. Ham, Jessica Ham, did not um, indicate whether or not she wanted vials or pens. So what I always like to do is I always like to default to the vials. I'm sorry, I always like to default to the pens. The patient likes the pens. They're, they're very easy. They're nice to work with. So hopefully we recognize now that if we default to the pens, we're going to input the drug Lantus Solo Star. So Lantus Solo Star will be the drug that we will input. So, um, so Lantus Solastar will be the drug. We are not going to use just the Lantus form. We're not going to use that because this is indicative of the vials. This is indicative of the pens. So every drug has a vial and a pen form, but the pen has a different name. Um, for example, Levomir is Levomir Flex Pen, but we can't get Flex Pens anymore. Um, Humalog, Humalog says, uh, Humalog says pens, I'm sorry, Flex Pen as well. We can't get those as well. One thing that we could look at is the, I'm sorry, the route of administration. And I will show you this on the video when we go ahead and put these in here. That is also abbreviated ROA. When the pens are used, that the route of administration will be SOLP. 
um, which stands for solution pen injection. And for a vial, it just says SOLN, which just stands for solution. So this is specific for the pens. So that'll help you figure this out as well. So let us look at the SIG. The SIG here is going to be inject 60 units subcutaneously. Normally we would type that out, but just for this video purpose, well, I'll just I'll be accurate. Subcutaneously. Um, every day right before bedtime. So QD means every day. And QHS means at bedtime or before bedtime. The reason why um, Dr. Ham would have written this is because she wants to emphasize to the patient that it's important to be consistent with these long, consistent with these long-acting insulins. You don't want to take one one day at 10 in the morning, the next one at 7 p.m. at night, because these are designed to last for approximately 24 hours. So you want to do this every day at approximately the same exact time. So that's why she indicates at bedtime. So now we have to do some math to determine how many pens we need. So the math for how many pens we need. So we are taking, this patient's taking 60 units every day. So only 60 units. That's not so bad. So we're going to take 60 units per day. And remember these dose for a 90 day period. So this patient also, 9 times 6 is 54. Two zeros is 5,400 units per 90 days. So now we have to think to ourselves. We know that every pen, every pen has 100, I'm sorry, has 300 units per pen. Remember, there's 3 mLs, and this dose is as um, this, so the 3 mLs per pen, and every mL has 100 units. So, um, sorry, so we would have 3 times 100 is 300 units per pen. So we know we're going to have 300 units per pen. Um, so in order for us to determine how many units per 90 days, I'm sorry, how many pens per 90 days, we're going to take 5,400 units per day and um, per 90 days. And we divide this by 300 units per pen. So, um, so the 5,400 will divide evenly by 300. I understand that could be um, nothing that's common. So we're going to take 5,400 divided by 300 units. And we know that we're going to use 18, the units cancel, units cancel, pens per 90 days per fill. And this is 18 pens per fill. So that's how many pens we will need for this patient every 90 days. Every 90 days is considered one fill. Um, so I don't want you reducing 18 over 90. So 18 pens per one fill. So remember, in our EMR, we dose the quantity based off of the mLs. So if we have 18 pens per fill, and we know every one pen has 3 mLs, we know 18 times 3 gives you a value of 54. So we're going to be having 54 as our quantity. This will be our quantity that we will order and put on the prescription. So the quantity will be 54. The days for the prescription will be 90. And then refills will be 3. Okay, so that's how we would calculate the total quantity needed for this insulin. And I know we got a lot of calculations going on here, but that's okay. After a while, you become very fluent with them and, and never feel that you have to do this on your own. So always come and get assistance if you need help. Next patient. So <clears throat> notice this is a circumstance where, oh, and one other note I wanted to bring up um, in the first prescription I forgot to say about it. Notice that Dr. Cotty requested 30 pence. It's wonderful that he was being so generous and wanted 30 pens for the patient, but the, provide, um, the, uh, the manufacturer doesn't really care. They're going to give whatever is exactly needed because that's all they're legally mandated to do. So sorry for spacing out for a second, but, um, but they're always going to want 
to give exactly what they have to give. They're not going to give extra. And um, so no matter what they write for, it's sort of irrelevant. They're going to do it based off the correct dosage calculation. So um, keep that in mind. So notice in this circumstance, um, Dr. Hams go ahead and she's wrote, written for Humalog. So if we go back to our beginning, we know Humalog comes as pens or vials. So we're thinking pens for the patient. It makes it a lot easier. So we know the drug here is Humalog. And these are the pens. So when we put this into our AMR, we're going to be choosing Humalog that corresponds to the pens. The route of injection will be SOLP. So the SIG states, use according to sliding scale, carb counting scale, do not exceed 50 units per meal. Okay, so the SIG is that we will have to reference carb counting scale and there's probably a very large scale on there for example test your blood sugar before each meal if your blood sugar is between 150 and 200 inject one unit between 200 and 250 inject two units 250 and 300 inject three units and so forth um, it's very tough to put that all on the prescription because the prescription is only so small the drug company cares about the max amount of insulin per day the max amount of insulin per day. So what we are going to put on that SIG is that we will start this off by thinking, okay, we're going to take 15 units per meal. We assume three meals in one day. So we know we have 15 units per meal times three meals per day. The meals cancel. 15 times three means that this patient will be using at most 45 units per day. This is the max quantity. So what we will have to put on the SIG is that we will say do not exceed 45 units per day. So we'll put that here under line one. And then under line two we'll put this second SIG. So under line two we would put the scale. So having this 45 units per day is what the drug company will need in order to confirm that our calculation is correct. So now we're going to have to figure out how many units of insulin the patient's going to use over 45, I'm sorry, over a 90 day period. So we're going to go ahead and do some math. So we know the patient takes 45 units of insulin per day. And we know that we are going to have 90 days per per one fill 90 days per one fill so notice we're gonna have 45 times 90 so this patient's gonna have use 4050 units per every fill every order that comes in from this drug company they're gonna need 4050 units okay so we remember that we want the pens and the pens have 300 units per pen. So we're going to take this and divide this by 300 units per pen. And notice my units will cancel. So now we're going to divide this by 300. And we get that we need 13.5 pens per fill. But we know, we know that we're not going to get 13.5 pens. We're not going to split up half a pen. So this will round to 14 pens. This will round to 14 pens. But the quantity that we're going to input in our EMR will be the mLs. It has to be the mLs. So we know there's 3 mLs per pen. So we're going to get 14 pens times 3 mLs per pen, 14 times 3, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 gives you 42 mLs. So the quantity that you will import input is a value of 42. The days will be 90, refills equals 2, 3. So I'll write that out here. The days will be 90, refills equals two three so that's how we determine the quantity that we're going to use via this mathematical application 
So again, this one was a little bit more vague, but the patient has a sliding scale that's based off of some carb regime that Dr. Ham has discussed with the patient. So again, all of this is appreciated. Um, however, the drug company is going to say the patient's on Humalog, the max amount of units they're going to use per day is 45, and that's all they're going to ship. Okay, so let's go on to our next one. Here we're on Levomir pens. Okay, so now we're on Levomir pens. Hopefully something's screaming to us. I know what's screaming to me is that Levomir only comes in vials. Levomir only comes in vials. So since it only comes in vials, I'm going to say, oh, oh, um, Dr. Ham, um, Jessica, do you mind? Uh, do you think this is the best, the best type of insulin? Because we can only obtain this in vials. We can't get this in pens. And she may say, oh, good idea. Let's rewrite this for Lantus. So let's write this for something else. However, um, sometimes patients respond to one form of the insulin protein over the other. If an insulin assay is done, they realize that the patient's not as responsive to the um, Lantus as they are the Levomir, then we're going to have to order the vials. So in this circumstance, we're going to have to order the drug that corresponds to Levomir, and this will be the vials. And the route of administration for vials is always SOLN. So SLLN. So that's how we know that we're also corresponding to the Levomir vials. Okay, so now we're going to analyze the SIG. And remember, if we're in vials 2, we're thinking we have 10 mLs per vial, which means that we have 1,000 units of insulin per vial. So the SIG here is going to be inject 50 units subcutaneously twice daily. So we're going to inject 50 units sub cutaneously and I know she didn't write SQ on here but we can automatically assume it's to be subcutaneously we don't want to um, have the patient giving it to them intramuscularly or intra intravenously so we're gonna make sure to emphasize subcutaneously but always check do always check with the provider to make sure that's what they want inject 50 units subcutaneously BID means twice daily inject 50 units subcutaneously twice daily so I know that she wrote for 25 pens just because she wrote for that doesn't mean we're going to get it. Um, actually, we're not going to get it. And uh, then we have three refills. So now we have to calculate the amount of units we're going to use per the 90 days for the fill. So if we have 50 units twice daily, over one day, we know we're going to use 100 units per day. 100 units per day. And we know we have 90, we have 90 days per every fill. So this means that we're going to have 90 times 1,000, which gives us 9,000 units per fill. Big dose. Big dose. 9,000 9, 9, units per fill, not 90,000. 90,000 units per fill. That's a big fill. And if we assumed, if we assumed that we were able to get the pens for this patient, let's think about this. 9,000 divided by 300 gives us a value of 30. We would need 30 pens for this patient. That means they'd have to send 30 pens for us. That's a lot of pens. But remember the vials, the vials come in a more, in a, in a larger, in a larger form. So in the vials, we know that we're going to have 1,000 units per vial. So if we want to find out the amount of vials, we take the total amount of units that we need per fill and divide it by the total quantity of the vials. So we're going to have 9,000 units per fill and divide that by 1,000 units per vial. My units cancel. 9,000 divided by 1,000 gives us a total of 9 vials per fill. So we know this patient will need exactly nine vials every time. So they can get send nine vials in a small little package, or they can send 30 pens. And we know why now these drug companies do not want to send pens. They're not going to send pens because it's just going to be more expensive. It's, it's just uh, more costly because each one of these insulins have to come in a, in a frozen cooler because they all have to stay, they have to stay cold because the protein gets too hot, it denatures, and it's nowhere near as effective, and it could actually cause some problems. Um, if the patient were to inject it, we wouldn't want that to ever happen. So we never want to give a denatured insulin. But um, but we know that here we could either send 30 pens, we could send 30 pens, or they could send nine miles. But now we have to calculate the pharmacy quantity. So we have to calculate our pharmacy 
quantity. Remember, we know that for every vial, we will have 10 mLs. 9 times 10 gives you 90 ml. So we're going to input a quantity of 90. The days for this prescription will be 90 and refills will be 3. So in this prescription, even though she wanted to get 25 pens, we would actually have needed more if we were to obtain the pens. We would need more than 25. 25 seems like a lot amount, and it normally is, but this patient's on a lot of Levomir every day. So we would have to obtain 30 pens, but since we can't get pens, we're going to have to get the patient vials. So, um, so that is, I'm sorry, that leads to the conclusion, the last prescription, I believe that's, oh no, we have two more. So um, we have two more prescriptions, and this one is going to be a Humalog pen, and it gives a sliding scale. So just to save us time, I know the drug here that we're going to indicate will be the hum. The drug here will be the Humalog pens. Okay, and for the sig, we could spend some time and put the the scale. I'm just going to say put the scale. You could type the scale in here, but before we type the scale we have to insert something that is important. And we always have to insert the max units of insulin per day. We have to determine the max amount of insulin per day. So if we go through the scale, we realize we have 100, and I'll zoom in on this so we can hopefully see it. Let me make this bigger. So we can see this. So the drug is Humalog Pens. The sliding scale means if your blood glucose is between 150 and 200, inject one unit, 201 to 252 units, all the way down to five units. But she put a little asterisk here at the, at the end. It says, do not exceed five units per meal. So Dr. Hewitt says, you know what? We're not going to exceed five units per meal. She doesn't want any more, than, any more than five units per meal. So that gives us the max dose per meal. So we will have to insert with the SIG before we go ahead and do anything else with the sliding scale that we will say do not exceed, ready, be careful here, 5 units per meal, assume 3 meals per day, 15 units per day. So that's the first thing we're going to put in there because when we print our prescription for our drug companies, they're going to see this and Dr. Yard is going to sign off on it. So we went ahead and calculated that for her. So if we use 15 units per day and we want to dose for 90 days, 90 times 15, we're going to get out our calculator, 15, oops, 15 times 90 means that we're going to use 1,350 units per every fill, per every fill. All right, so 90 days would cancel, so this will be per every fill. So this patient needs 1,350 units for every 90 days. So we have to obtain that. And we know it's Humalog, Humalog, we can, get, we can obtain pens. This is a relatively small quantity. Um, and this is actually much more convenient for the patient to have when they're only injecting a couple units when they're eating. They might be at work and they go to grab some lunch, they check their blood sugar and they realize it's, you know, 200. So if it's 200, they're going to have to inject two units. And eventually the patients start to know their bodies. They, know, they start knowing what their blood sugar is going to be and they start controlling their diets. So they, they almost, um, a lot of times, they don't even check their blood sugar. They just know at lunchtime they expect to give themselves two units. At dinner time they're going to have to give themselves three units. Breakfast they may just have to give one unit. They're going to see us pretty consistent. So, um, so we just have to get them the insulin and then they can usually take a lot of it from there. So we know that for every pen, we know there's going to be 300 units of insulin per pen. So we're going to divide this by 300. The units cancel. So we're going to get 1350 divided by 300. So we're going to divide this by 300. And we know that this patient only needs 4.5 pens per fill. And that's not so bad. That's just a box. And that's a pretty good well-controlled diabetic. I, I'm betting that they are a type 2 um, and probably trying to get there, you know, probably trying to be under good control. So, um, so they only need 4.5 pens for every 90 days. That's not so bad. So now if we want to find the pharmacy quantity, the quantity, we know that we're going to have 4.5 
pens per every one fill and we're going to multiply this by we're going to multiply this by um, 3 mls per pen. Pens cancel, so 4 times 3 gives you 12. Oh my goodness, what am I saying? 4.5 pens. This will approximate 5 pens because we know we can't get a half a pen. Sorry about that. So this is actually a value of 5 pens, not 4.5. So 5 times 3 gives you a quantity of 15 ml. So that's going to be our pharmacy quantity. Yeah, we can't obtain a half a pen. They're not going to send us half a pen, so sorry about that one. Um, so we're only going to need 15 mLs. So that will be our quantity. Again, the days for this prescription will be 90, and then our refills will be 3. And this brings us to our last prescription, which is Humalog 7525. And I'm not too worried about this one, but I do want to bring up how this prescription differs in the last Humalog. And notice this drug is the Humalog mix the 75 25 and this will be the pens and we still can obtain any of the humologs through pens so we're safe there i'm just going to quickly calculate this one because it's we've done it a couple times now inject 30 units tid subcutaneously so we're injecting 30 units three times daily and it should be subcutaneously here so inject 30 units subcutaneously three times daily. So if we want to do our math, we'll quickly do our math. We know that we're going to take 30 units times three, so we're going to use 90 units a day. Well, that's a lot of units. And we know there is 90 days per one fill. So this will equal nine times nine means that we're going to get 8,100 units per every fill. That's how many units they're going to use over a period of 90 days. We're going to divide this by 300 units per pen. So 8,100 divided by 300 gives us 27 pens. This patient needs 27 pens per 90 days. Oops. 27 pens per 90 days. So if we want to calculate the quantity, we know that we're going to need 27 pens, and there is 3 mLs per pen. So 27 times 3, so we know 7 times 3 is 21. 3 is times 2 is 6. Add 2 gives you 81. So we're going to be using 81 mLs. So that'll be our pharmacy quantity, specifically just the 81. You can't put mLs in the quantity. The days for this prescription will be 90 and the refills will be um, three refills. So that's how we've gone ahead and done some of these prescriptions. Hopefully you learned from this and um, and I didn't make it a little confusing when I missed the, the half dose on that last one. Um, so again, just apologize, apologize about that. So um, if you guys have any questions, always let me know. My email is mjohnston at healthandupclinic.org and, and um, I'll be always more welcome to help you. Thank you.